I'm not sure I have a statement, but anyway. Uh, thanks for everybody for coming. We have a nice mix here of obviously media, uh, coaches, a bunch of coaches and, and alums and present players and the, just, you know, I guess before I introduce Shane and bring him up formally, just the, the path that we went to get here, you know, it, it was a very rapid downhill path that uh, didn't try to overspeed the process, but, you know, it, it was one of the things I really wanted to get is, isn't Rick calmly making a decision on who the next football coach should be, but to incorporate and involve alums. And so what I did was put a group together where I tried to go by decade, you know, to a certain point and then get involvement of people who know football and care about this program and want to get past the stigma that the university doesn't care about football, that, that to reinforce that we do care, to get questions answered about you know, what it might take for them to be successful. It's an extremely challenging sport from the standpoint of working with 100 athletes, you know, and now competing with the monsters that are Grand Valley and Ferris, you know, and to get back to where we all want to be and have been, you know, in this present climate in this day and age. You know, and so we had great input from the, the group of alums who were very strong. You know, in the end, Steve Mariucci was very, very active. I talked to Robert Sala several times in the process. The people on the committee have been successful while they were here as athletes, while they went gone on to the, to the real life world beyond athletics. And so uh, I'm very confident in the end there was input and time and care were taken. I think in the decision that was made, I think it's good for the university. I think it's good for football. I think it can uh, come in and, and just get things going. I think every coaching staff that you bring in, no matter what the sport, has their own plan, their own philosophy. You know, and, and what I want to reinforce is the, I think the support and the belief internally in the football program that we do want to regain a level of success that we've had in the past. And I believe strongly it can be done. And, and so that's where how we got to where we are today. Uh, I told them I almost put a tie on today, but I don't wear a tie anymore, fortunately, but or else I would have for him. But uh, I'm really, really pleased to be able to introduce formally to you Shane Richardson. Thank you, Coach Comley. Um, I'll talk about you here in a second, but uh, you know, it's been a whirlwind uh, for the last seven days, and I haven't even been on campus for the last seven. A couple of those days I was gone, and um, boy, what a thrill to be back. And uh, you come back, and honestly, it's been 21 years, and uh, you, you learn a new perspective. You see things through a different lens, and you really appreciate what's here. And what a great university, what a great town, uh, what a great community. And just to come back and be a part of something that I used to consider home and now make it home again, uh, what a special opportunity and I'm really thrilled about that. Um, some people to obviously go through and thank here. Um, I've learned over nine years of being a head coach, I have to talk about my wife first. And uh, uh, my wife, Jenna, you will meet her, and she will be very active and um, just a wonderful person. Uh, couldn't do it without her sacrifice and encouragement and the support she gives. And great mom to our four kids. Uh, we've got four. 15-year-old boy, his name is Ford. 13-year-old uh, girl, her name is Bo. 11-year-old uh, boy, his name is Jude. And an uh, 8-year-old boy, his name is Bear. And uh, he can live up to that name sometimes, too. So... Um, just, you will see them around. Uh, we're gonna have a football family and they're gonna be uh, at the forefront of it. And so, um, just can't thank my wife enough. She's a wonderful person and uh, you will get to know her and, and realize that soon enough. Um, thank you to current, current president, uh, Dr. Schuling. Uh, her, everything she's done for NMU up to this point and uh, getting a chance to connect with her. Uh, really appreciate the time that she took with me in this process. Uh, Incoming president, Dr. Brock Tesman, and uh, I believe uh, he's here today, and thank you for being here, President. Uh, uh, just uh, really looking forward to your vision and your energy, and uh, you know, it's great to be uh, connected with you through this process as well, so thank you for approving this. Um, you know, the search committee, uh, 
Coach Conley talked about them. Um, can't thank them enough. Got a lot of interaction with them. And um, it was neat to be able to just see how much alumni care and understand, uh, like Coach talked about, how important this program really is. And of course, uh, we fell on hard times here the past few years. And uh, it's really time to infuse some energy to get that going again and, and to do it the right way. And um, can't say enough about the people that led that search committee and were on that. Um, just, you know, great voices, proud alumni, energy that uh, really wants to give back to Northern Michigan football. And, um, you know, I appreciate their efforts in doing that. Um, coach Conley, you know, I, I, he is a two-time national championship winning coach at the highest level in college athletics. And you cannot get better than that. And he knows how to win. He knows what success looks like. And for him to uh, walk me through this process and to get to know him and to be able to see his vision and understand what it is for NMU athletics and NMU football uh, is extremely exciting. And you know, uh, he is a big part of the reason why I'm standing here today, and I appreciate uh, Coach Conley uh, just for the work that he did in making this possible, and really look forward to working with you. Um, former players and alumni, we have some here today. Um, he, gosh, the, the outpouring and the energy that I've received in terms of text messaging, and um, I don't even know how to use all uh, social media these days, but they're, they're on there somewhere, and I know I haven't gotten back to them all, but... Um, the pride, the passion that comes along with this alumni base, uh, it's time to awaken that again and get them guys going again. And um, I'm excited to just dive into it with, with a lot of great alumni from all the recent decades. A um, lot of success has come with this program, a lot of guys that have poured their heart and soul into this. And uh, I want to be able to work with them to give back and, and to get this going the right way. Um, I think a special group that needs recognition is, uh, is our team, you know, the NMU players right now. Adversity and uh, lots of indecision and uncertainty and, you know, where's the direction of the program going? And they had to go through uh, a month or so, uh, you know, of just kind of not knowing what was going on. And I give them a lot of credit for, um, you know, just being able to trust the process, which is a cliche term these days, but it's very real. Uh, and you have to do it. And uh, for the players that will be here, they're the right ones. They're choosing Northern Michigan. They're choosing Northern Michigan football. And we're going to do it the right way. And their experience is going to be extremely rewarding. And uh, can't wait to get, get to work with those guys. Um, you know, <laughs> the, most, the most fun uh, part of my job is to work with players and student athletes. And uh, I haven't gotten to do that yet. And so uh, a lot of exciting things on the horizon still to be able to work with those guys. And, They'll come back to school next week and, um, you know, full speed ahead. So uh, it'll be great. Um, you know, 27 years ago, uh, I was on campus uh, for the first time ever, January of 1996. And uh, Eric Holm, the head coach here at the time, brought me in, gave me an opportunity. And, you know, I, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan area. And... Uh, coming to Northern Michigan, I didn't know a whole lot about it. I was used to the downstate schools, the ones that are in our conference now. Uh, I was about 20 minutes away from Grand Valley where I grew up. And uh, I tell you what, the first time I came to Marquette and after really experiencing a, a weekend, uh, you know, in the program and around the players and the people that this program attracts, uh, amazing. And I knew it was the right, the right concept for me as a student athlete. And I chose it, and um, my life was changed. And um, I tell you, you know, what I have learned from this university, from this community, um, has changed my life forever. And um, the lessons, the things that uh, coaches uh, taught me, the players and the, and the friends that I gained through the process, uh, just you'll remember that forever. And... I want that to be a great experience for every uh, student athlete that we bring in here from my, uh, for in my leadership from this point on. Um, I've got tremendous pride in being a Wildcat. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, the things that we were able to accomplish when I was here, um, you know, there was a lot of success, there's a lot of ups and downs, there's a lot of things that we went through, but we learned and we grew and it made us better people. And, um, you know, after leaving here, you know, I looked back and thought about the values that I learned here 
throughout my time uh, with being with coaches like Herb Granke and Jimmy Driscoll and Bobby Jurison. And um, I tell you what, uh, those characteristics that I learned and took with me has formed my way of coaching. And it's, it's going to be a part of who I am and how I do it. And um, I'm looking forward to combining that with obviously all the other lessons that I've learned from a lot of different coaches out there too. Um, you know, I think uh, our, our tradition and history is um, it, it's rich and, and it's, it's a very rich tradition of, of success. And, you know, a lot of people might not realize that nowadays, but um, boy, uh, we have had some great teams come through here. We've had great coaches come through here. We've had great players come through here. Uh, you go back to the record books and you go back to articles and things that we've done in the past in Northern Michigan football, uh, it's, it's really an exciting concept when you look at kind of the totality of the program. And for us to move in a direction to get that back, as Coach talked about, um, I, I couldn't be more thrilled to be a part of that. And um, I'm excited, uh, I'm, I'm energetic, and just extremely motivated uh, to be able to do that here uh, with everybody involved. Um, I think, you know, our culture, you know, there's buzzwords around the world of athletics today, but um, our culture is going to be one that uh, appreciates people. It's, it's going to be one that treats people the right way, that is able to pour into the student athletes and help them to be not only a better student, a better athlete, but a better person, you know, when they go out and live their lives. And, um, you know, it's, it's the total development of every individual that we work with that's going to be focused on. And we're going to have a culture that um, really understands how to develop people, uh, how to push their best and understand their potential and get that out of them every single day. Uh, you can talk about it, but you've got to be about it. And you've got to, you've got to train it every day. You've got to demand it. You've got to hold people accountable. And uh, when people understand what the expectations are, uh, when they kind of, you know, all uh, operate under the same accountability standards and when everyone is one in spirit moving towards the same common goal, you have something special. And that's what we aim to do here. And that's going to be a big part of our culture. Um, you know, the vision is uh, for people to look at us and see the way we work, the way we train, the way we go to class, the way that we uh, treat people across campus, the way that we conduct ourselves off campus. Um, we want people looking at us uh, as example setters, and we want to be uh, just a great standard for everybody to see and, and to follow to say, wow, that, that's a premier program that operates at the highest level possible. And, you know, when you can do that in your daily habits, uh, the process is uh, much more important than the actual product, the end product at the end of the day. Now, we are judged by that, of course. Uh, but the way you get there is to be able to really pour into the process, to understand uh, every day, every rep, uh, every practice, every time you have an opportunity, it matters. And um, you, you cannot overlook reps. You can't overlook situations. You can't overlook scenarios. And, um, you know, Coach, um, he, Coach and I were talking in the back of the room today, uh, you know, it's one play that could beat you, and you don't know when that's coming. It could be in the first period, the second period, the third period. It could be in the first quarter, right before halftime. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, all plays matter, and you know everybody's got to do their job and got to pull in the same direction. Um, our coaches are going to be on the same page. We're going to we're going to coach players hard. Uh, we're going to love them hard. We're going to we're going to treat them like they are our own sons and. Um, you know, it, it's going to be a, a very demanding environment and it's going to be a very rewarding one. And it's going to be one that uh, will benefit them as individuals and collectively as a team. And, you know, the, the team is the most important thing, no matter what. And uh, we're going to strive to be able to build it that way from the ground up. Um, we have a slogan. Uh, it's we, us, and our. And, you know, we take the I, me, my out of it. And, you um, it's, it's going to be a togetherness concept. The program uh, is always bigger than any head coach. It's always bigger than any starter or any uh, All-American or All-Conference player or anything like that. And, um, you know, the collective effort and everything that we all pour into it together uh, is going to make the difference. And so uh, we're going to aim to be the very best team possible uh, by doing it together. So um, I can't tell you how thrilled I am uh, to be the leader of this program and to move Northern Michigan football uh, into the future. And uh, I'm excited to get to work. And so uh, with that, I'll open it up for any questions. Hey, Coach. Max. 
So you've been the head coach at uh, UNC Pembroke since 2014. You've been on staff even longer than that since 2006. That's a pretty remarkable tenure in this era of college football. Mm -hmm. So was, would you say this opportunity was just the right one to, to pull you away from UNC? I think um, I'm loyal. You've seen that, you know, and that's what you're talking about. And, you know, I think what happens is you go and you, you grow in the profession. You get opportunities, and uh, they can be very good for you professionally. They can be very good for you personally. And that's what that opportunity was. And uh, I think, you know, looking at Northern Michigan, it was the perfect timing. It was um, just the perfect opportunity that came up at the perfect time in my career and where I was. And, you know, after discussing with Coach Comley uh, what it was going to look like and what his vision of it was, uh, it couldn't be more exciting. And, you know, I think um, Northern Michigan in the future here, you know, we are, we are looking to do some great things. And I just think just from a resource standpoint, from a support, from an energy standpoint, there's a lot of great things going on around here and uh, couldn't be more excited to be able to be in this position. Coach Dickeran from Local 3, um, obviously being a former player, former coach here, you got a unique advantage to understand everything that comes along with the enemy football program. Mm -hmm. How is that an advantage when you're selling to a recruit, um, you know, why they should come and play for you and the coaching staff? Absolutely. It's all about the fit, and y you, you need to attract people that are going to uh, understand Northern Michigan, understand Marquette, Michigan, understand the Upper Peninsula, understand that uh, we get 150 inches of snow on average a year and understand that it's a way of life and you've got to be able to embrace that and accept that and um, there's so many great things that go along with that. Some of my best friends still live here today and I get to come back and uh, be able to hang out with them and see them now. Um, you know, I think the environment trumps uh, any type of motivation or any type of planning or any anything that we can desire, right? And what I mean by that is uh, we're going to get the right people that are attracted to Northern Michigan for what it is and what Marquette, Michigan is and what the Upper Peninsula of Michigan is. And the people that are attracted to that, they're going to be highly motivated and it's going to bode well for our success. And you know, I did it five years as a player. Uh, I, I went through the grind of it. I stayed here. I, I did it in terms of the entire career that I could have had. And then I stayed in, in coach a year after that. And so I've done it on both ends. And so I can give great experience and, you know, just help people understand what that is all about when trying to attract them here. I guess what do you look for in, in a recruit, in a player? You know, what, what do you like to see out of uh, potential Guys are gonna bring in. Well, you know, the, the first thing is you have to be attracted to them as a football player, right? I mean, that's the easiest thing about recruiting. You get to see a highlight tape, you get to see what they do well, and that's like the first eye-popping thing that you see. But that the tough thing is getting to know them and understanding their character and understanding, you know, their academic uh, desires and motivations and um, understanding that, you know, they're a well-rounded fit. Um, we don't want to take guys that are just only good football players. And you've got to be uh, a well-rounded individual. You've got to be able to have a great ambition and a desire to have success in your life. It's got to be uh, part of your daily habits. And we want those guys. Um, we want <coughs> leaders. We want uh, guys that are going to just, you know, be able to be committed to what we're doing and understand our values and our system of operating. And uh, when they can get that and understand that and see the benefits uh, as to how it's going to uh, reward them, uh, those are the type of guys that we want. Well, Coach, like you addressed in your introduction, the program has fallen on some hard times yeah. recently. We haven't had a winning season since 2009, haven't finished even within a game of a 500 record since 2015. So when you take over a program like this that's frankly been in the doldrums for a while, what kinds of challenges come along with undertaking a task like that? Sure. No, I think... I think one thing that needs to be understood is that um, college football is very difficult and um, there have been some great coaches that have been here, uh, even, even in the hard times. And, and so um, it, it takes a collective effort by everyone involved, right? It's, it's administration, it's alumni, it's fan support, it's coaches, it's players. We all have a responsibility to align ourselves and be on the same train 
and all shoveling coal so that that train can stay on the same track and pick up speed. And that's the analogy I use with our team. Um, everybody's got to shovel their coal and you've got to be going in the same direction and make that fire burn hot and um, it's not one person. It's not one thing that attributes to it. It's, it's a collection of things that need to come together and dynamics and people and areas that all need to be at their best. And if we all say that we want Northern Michigan football to succeed, we've all got to make sure that we're committed to doing that. So like uh, Coach Conley kind of alluded to as well, we play in the GLIAC, which is one of, if not the toughest conferences in all of Division II football, sure. playing with monsters like Nation Powerhouses, Grand Valley, Ferris, mm -hmm. even Saginaw Valley in some respects is a consistently ranked team. So what does the Cats' path back to relevance in this conference look like? Yeah, I, you know, I think sometimes what has to happen is you have to focus on yourself first before you can start talking about other people. And, you know, I get it. There, there are great teams in this conference. And... What we have to do is we have to make sure that our house is cleaned. We have to make sure that our car is running correctly. We have to make sure that we're doing our job, right? And so our program has to make sure that we're thriving at the highest level possible. We're getting the right guys. Uh, the culture is on point. Uh, we're able to train the right way. Um, and, you know, all of those things on a daily preparation, they matter. And, um, you know, I think that's first and foremost what you have to do, right? Um, you know, of course, there's outside influences that can help with that, you know, of course, resources, of course, support, of course, people uh, being very um, thought progressive in terms of how to do something different that maybe other teams and other programs are not doing. And um, I'm quite sure that we have those people that care enough that we're going to have that. And, you know, I just think first and foremost, we have to make sure that our program and our team is at the very highest level possible in terms of our standards. And it starts with that. Uh, there's so many uncontrollables out there, you, you just, you can't worry about other people sometimes. And, um, you know, I played Grand Valley as a player, I've, I've, I've played Ferris State, and uh, they were actually really good back then too. And uh, we found ways to beat them. And, you know, it's, um, it's, it's something where we want to be in that, this conference, we want to be in those positions, and, you know, we're going to make sure that our competitive spirit is extremely high, and uh, we're going to do some of those things better than everybody else. You say, Coach, sometimes it starts with focusing on yourself. You're getting a chance with a basically blank slate of a coaching staff around you. I understand you brought a couple assistants with you from Penrose. Mm -hmm. How do you plan on filling in the uh, support staff around you? Yep. No, um, I think it's appropriate to introduce those guys. You know, our associate head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, Billy Lindquist. Um, you know, he's actually coached in the Upper Peninsula. He had a tenure at Michigan Tech, and he's very familiar with, you know, just the concept of what I talked about earlier. And so, um, you know, he, he's going to be fantastic offensively. Uh, we are on the same page, and um, I can't speak enough about just what he's done in the nine years that I've been with him. And, um, you know, he, he's just going to be very, very good for our, our players and our program. Uh, our recruiting coordinator and offensive line coach, Jeff Fantuzzi, um, a Michigan native. He's from the Detroit area, and uh, he's also coached in the Upper Peninsula. He's, he was at Finlandia University. He gets it. You know, he, he's been up here. He's lived up here. Um, you know, his energy and his tenacity, um, you know, will be very, very good for one of the most important positions on our football team. And so, um, you know, those guys are going to help kind of be, uh, you know, the foundation of what we're doing. Obviously, there's more positions to come, and, you know, we're going to hire the guys that uh, are going to align with our value system, you know, and I think three things. Uh, it's very simple. I've been talking to coaching candidates here the last, uh, you know, week or so, and um, I, I've told them the same thing. You know, the first and foremost thing is you've got to be a fit uh, to come to Northern Michigan and live in Marquette and understand the Upper Peninsula, and it's going to be no different from players or coaches. That's, that's how I'm recruiting, and that's how I'm talking to all these individuals. Uh, that's first and foremost. Number two is you have to understand our value system. You have to understand our process, our, our, you know, I call it the spirit of the wild, and it's really a collection of our philosophy, our culture, our mission, our vision, our values, and they have to be in align with that. And, um, you know, if, if those are things that they don't believe in or want to surround themselves with and want to portray those onto our players, uh, then they're not going to be a match. Uh, so we got to find the right guys to do that. And then obviously they got to be able to coach football. You know, they've got to be able to develop our guys, train them, 
understand um, you know all the things that college football comes along with and be able to do that very consistently at a high level. Coach, we've talked about this, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the transfer portal. Navigating that environment, whether it be bringing in different talent from other institutions or retaining the guys on our roster that have chosen to make that jump, how do you foresee navigating that type of environment that changes yeah. every day? Very difficult concept these days, and the world of college football has changed um, with that. Um, you know, what it is is you have to respect it because it's here. And, you know, even though you, you may not like it because it's so hard to build a program when you have guys with the easy opportunity to jump ship, um, you, you know, that's, that's really difficult to maintain a strong culture, as I'm talking about, and to be able to keep guys on board. Uh, if you think about it practically, Kobe, um, players that never get to be juniors and seniors in your program, it doesn't help, right? I mean, they're not going to play their best football for you. And so I think what you have to do is you have to build a great environment for those guys to want to stay. And uh, they have to be motivated in terms of how you are coaching them, how you are presenting an environment for them uh, to be able to thrive in. And I think that's one of the biggest things that you can do to control that. Um, you know, the other thing is, um, you, you know, you're going to have to stay up with it somewhat. Everyone has needs. The more players that potentially put themselves in the portal, you've got to try to find guys that can replace those guys. And it's going to be very hard to do that with incoming high school guys right away. Um, you know, our intent is to build it, you know, with high school guys predominantly. And, but you have to respect the portal and you have to be able to understand how to manage that and to stay up with that. Um, you know, I think you have to take a few transfers here and there and be able to get the best guys that are still going to fit your program. The standards don't change. And, you know, those guys are still going to have to understand uh, who NMU football is, is going to be and uh, be able to be, have a chance to, to be on the team. And so, um, you just you have to respect it, um, but you have to manage it well, and I don't think you have to bend in terms of your standards of the program either. Well, Coach, in talking with uh, you know fans and uh, other people who follow this program, when the news of your hire was announced, the general vibes were you know, hope, optimism, excitement. Really, the only detraction that anybody I spoke to could come up with was just pointing to your 37 and 48 overall record at Pembroke. So, how would you respond to, to something? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're judged by numbers. We're judged by wins and losses. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I've experienced success. I've experienced uh, losing, uh, as you pointed out. Um, but, look, it, it's, it's about the process, and I'm not going to ever go against that. Um, I can tell you how many games. I can go back and give you how many games we were one play short, two plays short, and, um, you know, for the last two years, we lost six games by a total of 18 points. Uh, that's the difference between a 9-2 and two record and an 8-3 and three record. And so it looks a little different if, you know, the ball bounces just a little bit differently, right? And there's so many things you can't control. And, you know, you have to continue to stay focused on what you can control. Um, you know, it's nothing to shy away from. It, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, what... Um, you just keep moving forward and, and you try to find ways to fix it and get it better. And, um, you know, all I know is I am an extremely great fit for Northern Michigan. I love this place. Uh, this is who I am. This is how I have been formed in the world of college football. And, you know, I intend to come back and be able to instill the values that uh, I experienced in terms of being successful. And hopefully, you know, our team and everyone around us can uh, jump on that same train and we're all moving forward to be able to fix those numbers. We're in Wisconsin, obviously, um, I know you have connections downstate. Um, are like, is it, is it open to where you're going to try to recruit, where you're going to try to get mm -hmm. players from? Things like that? Yeah, no, thanks for bringing that up. I think recruiting is... You know, you, you've got to find uh, guys that are going to be like-minded, right? And people from the Upper Peninsula, people from uh, Wisconsin, people from Lower Michigan, uh, they're going to be able to identify and connect more closely and maybe quicker than some other people. But it doesn't mean that you're not going to recruit the other areas. You know, I think what I'm looking at is kind of the um, – radius of you know drawing a line you've got minneapolis that's six and a half hours away chicago six and a half detroit six and a half you draw a line around all three of those and everything that you can cover inside of that uh you're going to be doing pretty good and there's going to be enough people uh that are inside of that in those three big areas and then you know working our way 
obviously from campus out, um, you know, you're going to get the right people for sure. Uh, you can get guys here for sure. And uh, the guys that are here right now, they, uh, they came here because they chose Northern Michigan. They understand it. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to find guys that like that. Just kind of bouncing off that, you know, just evaluating the roster before, you know, coming here. Just talk about what you like, you know, on the roster, you know, and just hope the overall roster. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of great players uh, in this program. There, there's a lot of guys that can do great things for us. And I think it's always a fine line between you bring your own system, you bring your own X's and O's, and um, how do you actually have those players adapt to that, or do you kind of play to their strengths, right? And I think it's a mix of both. And so you got to be smart as a coach to be able to find what guys can do and what their strengths are and be able to play on those. And uh, obviously you have a system that you're comfortable with in all phases of the game and you gotta be able to teach them and develop them towards that as well. Well, I appreciate everyone coming today and um, do I need to turn it back over to Zach here? Good, okay. No, thank you guys for coming and we really look forward to this journey. Thanks a lot.